all set to go with the junior varsity game. A lot of familiar names in these rosters, Derek. We've got Polzers, Matheson, McQuinney. Some Stubblies. Yeah. Taylors, Stevensons. A lot of familiar lacrosse names to you people that have followed box lacrosse. Field lacrosse on the menu this afternoon. We're in for a good game. 16 and under. Should be some good matchups. Play underway just off the faceoff. Richmond and White, the Mountaineers in red. And a pass toward the goal, picked off by the goalie, fired back out. Mountaineers with possession. A defenseman wearing number zero, Jordan West Pratt. Number 56 with the ball, Wayne Tracy. Oh, his stick went for a ride there. Play considerably more vigorous in front of the net than it was in the previous game. Richmond defender coming up with the ball. It's his forward. Jerome Schmidt. Shot by the goal. Out of bounds. Timmy Winter, the referee, is signaling. Mountaineers possession. Back in. 66 up the right side. I believe he's going to be called for freehand. Yeah. Mountaineers are from, I understand, out in the valley. Abbotsford, Clearbrook area, Matsqui. Maple Ridge. Maple Ridge, the old MSA area. What we used to refer to as MSA. Yeah, a lot of the Maple Ridge club, uh, they formed field club called the Mountaineers, and players are from the surrounding area out in that area in the valley. Richmond unable to control the ball, goes out of bounds. Mountaineers will put it in play. Mountaineers with the ball. Gonna bring it up center. Travis Taylor, shot on net. Nice save. Goalie equal to the task. Number 33 for the Richmond team between the pipes. Paul Shapka, Shapka, here's a shot on the replay and the goalie fast. I think there's gonna be a lot of action in this game. Some good field across players out here. Travis Taylor with the ball once again. Off to another winger, Taylor, back to Taylor. Taylor being bothered, checking tight on the inside, unable to get through. Good job by the defender. Yeah, good defense on Richmond's part, keeping those midfielders and those attackmen away from, away from the net. Tough going inside, Taylor looking for an opening. Mountaineers well covered, trying to work his way around the left side. Switch back across, a shot. Good stop by the goalie. Not much movement on the other attackmen from the Mountaineers. I think no. they were trying to isolate them and uh, get them a good shot on net. Paul Shapka between the pipes. Richmond's now trying to clear the ball from their side of half, get it on the, the attacking zone, which they have done successfully. Daniel Plant. Plant with the ball for Richmond. Nice move around. He's going to shoot. Good stop by the Mountaineers goalie. Picked up by the Mountaineers. Plays it back to his goalie. Goalie's free game in this. Goalie's working the ball out. Having a Off mobile, having a goalie that can be mobile is uh, very important during an integral part of the game. Richmond delayed penalty for slashing. Number 11 for the, for Richmond already on his way off. Jeff Matsuo. Mountaineers will go on a power play. Back to the quarterback, number 51, Travis Taylor. Here we go, the shot. And he caught that right on the shaft of the stick to stop it. He got lucky. That he did. And oh. a shot. Big number 66. James Rosen. 
Hope I'm doing okay on that, Jim. Some of these kids are so big, I... They're not kids anymore, they're young men out there. Mountaineers take an early lead. On a quick goal by number 66, Rosen. Power play goal. Ball won cleanly by that draw man, number 51. 66 coming away, James Rosen with the ball once again. Line change. So far the play's been down in the Richmond end quite a bit. Richmond defender, out. A bounce shot by Rosen comes up and off the crossbar. Out of bounds behind the goal. Mountaineers ball. Here's something you don't see too often. You got a big stick player down here in the attacking zone. Defenseman? Yeah, uh, for people not familiar with the field across game, the defenders or big sticks because they carry six foot long sticks with them are usually down in the defensive end using that stick for checking purposes as you see here being able to poke check a defender from six seven feet away the midfielders and attack men all carry a shorter stick to be able to keep that ball in tight to their body not to be checked by the big sticks plant doing a super job to retain possession out there flipping the ball back to michael chambers with a shot, Taylor coming out for the Mountaineers. Switches hands nicely. Gets over center. Loses the ball. And the Mountaineers still with possession. Defenseman back off to Taylor. Taylor across center. Up to his winger. Hard shot just off the outside of the net and across the back. The Nets infield across are six feet by six feet, so they've got uh, a lot of square footage to shoot at. Number 21, Daniel Plant, quickly downfield, loses possession. Richmond recovers. Playing it off to the left, out behind to the right. Michael McQuinney. McQuinney into Plant. Plant tried a long pass. Left side of the net, ball goes out of bounds. Mountaineers will put it in play. What's with the Bermuda shorts here? On which? Number 28 on the monitor. And I've got a look at uh, a new uniform they're trying out here. Good looking shorts. <laughs> now, I would certainly think so. I, I this uh, number 59 for the Mountaineers wearing a pair of Bermuda shorts. Perhaps my apologies if if you'll check out 59 for the Mountaineers. He's got a beautiful pair of light blue ones, robin's egg blue ones on as well. But perhaps this, in light of the funding cut uh, recently announced by Sport Canada to our lacrosse organizations. Either that or players lost their shorts in between games. <laughs> I'll field lacrosse, one of the very popular up and coming games here in Canada. I'm, we're still in a quandary as to the decision by, by Sport Canada, but uh, we'll leave those comments until we get a moment. Play going on, Richmond with possession behind the Mountaineers net. Number 11, Jeff Matsuo, passed it off. Richmond moving the ball around, well shot on net. Mountaineers goalie equal to the task. Richmond was controlling the ball very well. I don't know why they took that shot from uh, such a distance. It was an inopportune yeah. scoring chance. They looked like they were working the ball in for a good opportunity and then they, they waste a shot and now uh, the Mountaineers are on an attack here. Travis Taylor with a Beautiful fake and a pass off to his number 48. Scott Tough and Tough got in there and put it by the goalie. 
Yeah, it was, uh, it was a nice play on the Mountaineers' part, capitalizing on a, on a save from the goalie, moving the ball up quickly. Good scoring opportunity, and they capitalize. Fast action. Here we are on the replay, and no chance for the goalie. Goalie. Play, playing goal infield lacrosse is a tough position. Like I said, those nets are six feet by six feet, and the goalies aren't wearing much padding. They've got a little bigger stick to help them. Um, they have to rely on some very fast reflexes and some agility to, to stop that ball. You also got to be a little crazy, I think, to play goal infield lacrosse without the padding because as, as you mentioned that ball comes at you at about 100 miles an hour uh, on a hard shot yeah and uh it, it stings when that ball hits you let me tell you it's a hard indian <laughs> rubber ball it's got a lot more density than a tennis ball here oh. we go the mountaineers in tough and the richmond goalie equal to the task a high shot losing possession right in front of his own net his defender, number 28, saving him on that. Ahead, across to center, working his way in. He shoots, stopped by the goalie. Oh, Derek, we're seeing some super lacrosse here this afternoon. Here we go. In tough. Bang! Stopped right in front. Once again, it, it appeared to be on the shaft of the stick. Or maybe the, the glove, the goalie's glove. And he's got a friend with that stick then, and uh, that, that shaft's making a few saves for him. Again, we Richmond, got... Richmond controls the ball very well. Schmidt and Chambers back and forth, back to Schmidt. Now, Schmidt, a long shot. A they, hopper just to the right. Yeah, they're controlling the ball very well, but then they're taking shots from uh, a little too far out. You know, there's a big hole in the middle. They got to try to get in a little closer net and test this goalie. They're not testing them from that far out. It appears the Richmond team shooting from considerably further out than uh, than the Mountaineers have been at the other end. The Mountaineers working their way toward the goal. Mountaineers have, showing, have been showing some good attacking strength here. They've been they've capitalized a couple times. Got a couple really good shots off on net. Oh, Grady in the middle to Polzer. Pass off to number 66, James Rosen. Rosen with the ball, looking for an opening to shoot. Down he shoots a bouncer and he scores. Nice move on the defender to get open, dodges him, and throws a nice bounce shot to the top left corner of that net. Pretty play. Be Rosen from Polzer. And I did not get the second assist. What number was Rosen? Rosen's number 66. That's his second goal of the game. Yeah, he got up to, I, this is perhaps Troy's younger brother. Could be. And the score, I would make it halfway through the first quarter. We've got the Mountaineers three, Richmond no score. You see they're taking the face off not right at center there if anyone's wondering what's going on. It's just getting a little too dusty and dirty right there in the a few too many center. ruts, yeah. They just moved it off onto to find some grass. Richmond working their way in. Backhand shot couldn't quite make it click. Number 21, Daniel Plant for Richmond. Taking that shot. Richmond's ball behind the Mountaineers net. Working it out to the left. Here we are and once again, good control. Daniel Plant losing possession out front. The Mountaineers up across center quickly. Three men up with him, up forward, and good back checking by Plant. And they score! Quick shot by Richmond, puts them on the board. Number 21, Daniel Plant. I was just about to say, Jordan West Pratt from the Mountaineers uh, playing big sticks made a couple great rushes up the field. That time he just uh, didn't get back in time to, uh, to use his expertise on the big stick 
helping uh, keep the attackman out from scoring a goal. Now we've got a 3-1 game. Here we go. Plant. And there's a delayed penalty to the Mountaineers. And I believe, I'm sorry, the scorer, number 15, Jonathan Knowles from 21, Plant. Richmond gets on the board. The score, the Mountaineers, three. Richmond, one. You see the and contact there off the faceoff. When there's a loose ball situation, when the ball's down on the ground or in the air, anyone within nine feet of that ball is fair game to be hit from either the front or side. So it always creates uh, an interesting situation to watch after a faceoff when that ball squirts out. You're listening for the pitter-patter of little feet coming at you. <laughs> In this game, looks like there's some big feet going to be coming after you here. There's some big boys out here. Yes, there are. And this is the 16 and under, Derek? 16 and under division. Junior varsity field lacrosse. The gold-silver medal game. A hard shot by the Mountaineers. The Richmond goalie equal to the task. He's made some good stops so far. That he has. Good play. Mountaineers coming up with a loose ball. Plays it into center. And Ta Travis Taylor, unable to control it, picks up the loose ball. And wait for his players to get in position. Travis Taylor. Off to number 48. Now you see the way he's carrying the ball. He's carrying it with one hand, shielding it off with his other arm. That's to, prote that's to protect the stick from, from the defenders being able to slash or, or poke away at your stick. Tough. Passing off to Nicholas Beers. Controlling the ball up top, looking for looking for a weakness in the defense, looking for a good shot. Taylor. Passed it off. Beers unable to get the shot away. Scramble for the loose ball. Still behind it. Goalie comes up with it for Richmond. Goalie has to get out of his crease. Goes behind the net. Plays it off to Tom Johnston. Johnston going to bring it up the left side. Finding their clear to get the ball out of their end. Back to the goalie. The goalie's an integral part of the clear. It creates an extra man on their side of half to be able to move this ball over center into the attacking zone. Mark Miyashita. I wonder if he's the same mark that played in the game. Wearing number 39, same number for Richmond. That could be. And Richmond, a strong bounce shot. The goalie partially screened on it. And Richmond draws within one. We're in the latter stages of the first quarter, John Filtooth. Derek Major, we're bringing you some super field across. Here we go, here's the goal. Bounce shot, fools the goalie. Partially screened in front. Scored by number 22, Jerome Schmidt for Richmond. Nice bounce shot. We've seen a couple great bounce shots scored today, both in the earlier game and today, with the, with the ground being eaten up and chewed up a little from a, a full weekend of lacrosse. There's a lot of little ruts and holes, and the ball takes a strange bounce. It's a hard Indian rubber ball, and it takes a strange bounce. And don't like you said earlier, I don't envy that goalie's position. That ball's oh, coming gosh. at you at all angles at a, a great velocity. And I'm I'm still somewhat amazed that the goalies are not wearing more padding than they are, Derek. That is a. I'm used to watching them in box lacrosse. Where here we go, the Mountaineers on the offensive, out in front, a shot. Richmond goalies, equal to the task. Looked like a little pushing from behind. Yeah, there's not much equipment worn by the goalie or, or the players. You know, the helmet and gloves for sure. A lot of the players wear some shoulder pads and an arm slash guard. I had been told prior to coming out another shot by the Mountaineers on a giveaway in front of the Richmond goal. I had been... Uh, Caution that the, the game is, it's a grit your teeth type. It is, it is a rough and tumble game as you see by the quality of the <laughs> hit right there. 
Richmond player Daniel Plant being uh, not a better example as we were speaking of to show that you got to be fairly tough to play this game of lacrosse. Keep your head up, as they say. Definitely keep your head up at all times, especially when there's a loose ball. If you're within nine feet, another good contact there. Plant uh, staying on his feet on that one. Possession again for Richmond. The defender swarming there. Three Mountaineer defenders taking him down. Oh, we're just seeing some excellent lacrosse this afternoon, Derek. I believe that's quarter time. And the first quarter over the score, ladies and gentlemen. We've got the, uh, the Mountaineers with three and Richmond two. A little breeze coming up here on the top of the truck. There's even some clouds forming in the distance. What happened to our beautiful day? Well, I'm just going to cool things off a little bit. Help the players out a little. Working up a good sweat out there in that first quarter. A lot of action. Good, exciting first quarter. Close game, 3-2. to two. Just some super lacrosse. Some great lacrosse. Uh, all these kids play box lacrosse, which is more prevalent in Canada, uh, especially in the lower mainland. And field lacrosse that we're seeing today has been on the rise over the last few years. It's uh, been growing in leaps and bounds, actually. This youth field league is in its second year of existence, the Pacific Coast Field League. And uh, we've got a replay on that second to last goal, the Mountaineers. And here he comes, number 21, Plant for Richmond. Long pass up and a heavy shot by number 15. Now the last couple goals, Jonathan Knowles. these two goals that Richmond has scored, they've, they've been from outside, but they were in a little closer than they were shooting from the beginning of the game, which is good. They're able to beat the goaltender if they get in a little closer. Hopefully their coach is telling them now, make sure you get in through that Mountaineer defense to be able to get some good close shots. Because uh, when they've got a good shot on that, they've been they've been scoring some goals. At the first stages of the, of the quarter, at the opening of the game, Richmond shooting from 60, 70 feet out, whereas the Mountaineers are working the ball in a little bit tighter. Right in onto the crease and, and beating the goaltender, uh, like I said, with the net being six feet tall, if you get in nice and close, the goaltender doesn't stand much of a chance. And here the Mountaineers putting one in the Richmond net just up over the goalie's shoulder. Ooh, Our crack camera crew able to get it for you here. We got the moon on camera here. Look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. We got a half moon out. We got some bees swarming around us. And a blues. Yeah. We're we're up on top of the broadcast truck at the South Arm Rec Center. Beautiful Sunday afternoon and... Uh, Battling all the elements, yeah, the sun, the fresh air. And, and It's tough being out here on these Sunday afternoons watching, watching these games, <laughs> I tell you. The fans are def definitely enjoying the game. I think the bees are, are interested in that aftershave you're wearing, Derek. <laughs> all set to start the second quarter. Tim Winter positioning the ball between the players. Mountaineers enjoying a one goal lead. Mountaineers three, Richmond two. Ooh, there's a big hit. We heard the bodies come together while the ball remained on the ground. Number 51 for the Mountaineers finally getting possession. Travis Taylor, integral part of the play for the Mountaineers. Taylor trying to come through the middle. Richmond's not going to let him. It's tough going in front of those nets. Richmond coming up with it. One of the defenders up to his forward, number 22, Jerome Schmidt. Nice move to get by that defender. Schmidt off to Matheson. Matheson with a ball looking for an open man for Richmond. Well covered out front. Back to Schmidt. Schmidt! A nice play. Attackman coming from behind the net. No Mountaineer defender saw him come around there. Quick pass and a quick stick goal right there on the crease. Was that number 10 that put that through? It was. Here. Yeah. There he is. Well, he's not moving around much. I think they've got him positioned behind the goal. And that's where he's supposed to wait. I'm only guessing. It is that. only about plus, what, 17, 18 degrees out here. It's not yet summer in Vancouver, so... He may be used to a little warmer weather. <laughs> Actually, it's a fabulous day. I don't know why oh. he's wearing pants. Well, these guys are working up. A, nobody's getting cold out there. 
Number 10, the goal scorer, Neal Munster for Richmond. Ball out of bounds. Mountaineers will put it in play. Back to Plant. Plant, one of the big guns for the Mountaineers. I'm sorry, that's Travis Taylor. My apologies, Travis. Richmond defender not going to let him in close to the net. Number 17 defending. James Dixon doing a good job on Travis. And he scores! I'm glad Travis scored that goal because I was just about to make a comment that he should look for an open man. Uh, yes. <laughs> you can see the coach on the sideline saying no, 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 and then the goal goes in and he says good job after that. Travis Taylor. Breaking the tie. Mountaineers up by one to score. The Mountaineers four, Richmond three. Once again, the Mountaineers comprised of uh, Upper Valley teams, Abbotsford, Matsqui, Maple Ridge, Mission, that area. Pit Meadows, there. yeah. Most of them from around that area. You see on the face off here, I'll make a little comment, that all the players behind all these restraining lines, the midfielders are battling for the ball as the draw men fight for it. The attack men and the big stick defenders are held back behind these lines until there is some possession. Once there is possession, the referee will blow them in. They can cross over those lines and they're free to roam around the field. Richmond with possession. Quick pass in front. And number 21, Daniel Plant. Still with possession. Trying to get the glove back on. Letting his teammates set up and probably going to run a play here. Big opening in the middle if he can make it. No, she's closed off. They're giving him lots of room in there on occasion. On his offhand, he shoots, he scores! Travis Taylor. Once again, tying the score at four for Richmond. Taylor, here we go, on the inside. Looking, looking. Oh, nobody there, I'm gonna shoot it. 21, bang. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong sheet, Mr. Plant. Thank you, Derek. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> and he comes Mr. back and Plant. wins the face off. Plant with possession. Looking for Neal Munster again. <laughs> Mountaineers ball. He's wearing double aught. Is that uh, Jordan West Pratt? I believe that is Jordan. Good big stick for, for the Mountaineers. Likes making a lot of rushes up the field I've seen this weekend. Mountaineers ball right out in front of the goal a long hard shot Richmond goalie up to it His goaltender's been put to work this game Some oh. good shots out there For not having the bulk of padding that uh, that I'm used to seeing in box lacrosse goalies these guys are doing a super job Mountaineers in quickly and they score yeah, not much a goalie can do in a situation no. like that. Uh, you got an attack man all alone down on the crease. What a net to shoot at. I Jane. don't know where the Richmond defenders were there. Rosen put it into Wayne Tracy, and no chance. He was five feet in front of the goalie. Who scored that, Wayne Tracy? I believe number 56. We got it on the replay. 63. Off to Rosen. Ladies and gentlemen, the sun is so bright up here on top of the truck, we can't even see what the replays are on the monitor. I'm just going to take off my shirt here and <laughs> bake a little bit in the sun. Not making you envious now, am I? Richmond possession up across center. Chris Gilfillian. Loose ball. There was some potential for a big crunching hit there in the middle, and he ducked under it just I in saw time. It. Saw it coming. 
Mountaineers pick up the loose ball. Here's some good wheels making a break Travis up the Taylor. field. Taylor, pass behind the oncoming player. That was Taylor looking for Wayne Tracy. Same combination that clicked on the last Mountaineers goal. Pass a little bit behind it. Richmond will put the ball in play behind their own goal. Once again, one of the big differences that, I, that I'm noticing in the game, the goalies are far more mobile. Richmond up the field. Yeah, goalies actually come up in this game and join in the offense occasionally. Richmond on the offense in the Mountaineers net. Number 11 for Richmond. Jeff Matsuo looking for a tip in just off the goalie's left side. The Mountaineers will put the ball in play. Mountaineer goalie putting it out over center. Picked up by Richmond, it's number 15. Jonathan Knowles. And now number 28, Scott Beeman. Beeman for Richmond. Back to Christian Matheson. Good and stop. In. Mountaineers goalie equal to the task. A few holes in the Mountaineer defense there allowing the Richmond attackmen to, to come in and get a nice bounce shot off. Travis Taylor. Up to Wayne Tracy. Tracy gets the ball back. A oh, nice give and go and it works once again. Number 60, Mark Stubley, perched on the side of the crease. Mark Stubley is actually grandson of uh, Dorothy Robertson, a longtime employee of the oh. BC Lacrosse Association, who just retired this year. We've got it on the replay monitor once again. A nice little give and go, and Stubley makes no mistake. The Richmond Big Sticks with their hands in the air wondering who was covering Mark Stubley. Well, obviously nobody. <laughs> yeah. Stubbly got a nice clean shot away and beat the goalie. No chance for the goalie when you're in that close, Derek. No, and uh, they've scored on that side. Uh, their last two goals have come from that same side. Similar play. The uh, the Richmond Big Stick defenders not covering that side of the field very well at all. Well, if it worked once, she was going to go again. The Mountaineers. And the score, ladies and gentlemen. Six to five for the Mountaineers. Got a Richmond player injured. Didn't the, see what happened to him. He looks like he's holding his, his head. That's number 21 for Richmond, Daniel Plant. Big part of Richmond's offense. He's gotten a goal so far, and I believe an assist. Well, what a treat. Maybe he's relaxing and enjoying the day as well as we are here. Enjoying the sun for a while. Call the game to a halt. Now hopefully he's okay. Looks like he got a, a shot up high. Here comes the... Uh, the fabulous St. John's Ambulance people that have been helping out all weekend long. Yes. Haven't needed them much at all this weekend, which is, which is a good sign but they have been on site the whole weekend in case there is a problem. Uh, players up. And hopefully he's gonna be okay. Just seeing a few stars perhaps. Rung his bell maybe a little and uh, had that happen on occasion. It <coughs> takes you a few seconds before you remember your name and where you are and why you're here. <laughs> He'll be right back in the action in a few minutes, I imagine. Tough lacrosse players, they're always back in, ready to go. Indeed. We've seen it uh, all too many times. Now, a lot of people, when they see the game of lacrosse or they hear the name lacrosse, they think, well, that's, that's way too rough, that's too violent. But as you see here today, it's just good, clean, physical contact. No injuries to be seen of today. And uh, I've, I've seen a lot rougher games in soccer in, 
the international soccer than we're seeing here this afternoon. Oh, I mean, you see cheap stuff and tackles in soccer that uh, could potentially uh, injure someone pretty good. And the referee's right on the ball with a call. Here, all the contact is from the front or the side. So if you keep your head up and everyone is well padded, there's not going to be many injuries. <coughs> Mountaineers ball, they're going to put it in play behind the Richmond goal. Travis Taylor once again out front. A hard shot by number 66. Again, most of, their most of their shots coming from that left side of the field. So you've got some good right-handed midfielders and attackmen on that side. Back to Taylor. And a shot. The goalie knocked in by number 66, Rosen. A nice goal as the ball was bouncing up loose right in the crease. Dove through the air to, to bat that in before he landed in the crease. Nice goal. Real good heads up play by Rosen. Put the Mountaineers up by three. The score. Seven to four. In the Mountaineers' favor. We're somewhere in the second quarter. And the ref noticed there is a lineup problem going on here. As mentioned earlier, a rather large depression dead center. They are going to face it off from the middle. Lots of ruts out there and difficult to pick the ball up. An advantage here for the Mountaineers off the faceoff, even though Richmond picked it up with one of their midfielders being penalized. Left a three on two in the middle of the field, but Richmond did well to gain possession. Schmidt passed it off to Matsuo. Matsuo with the ball. Shot on net. Richmond will put it in play behind the Mountaineers' goal. Richmond's possession because they were closest to the end line when the ball traveled over that end line. That's how, that's how you determine who gets possession of the ball on a shot. That's why you'll see the attacking teams placing one of their attackmen behind the net. So if they do miss a shot, they are closest to the end line to keep possession in their favor. Smart. There's a lot of strategy involved in field lacrosse. That there is Taylor to Rosen. Shot on net, the Richmond goalie. No problem with that. He saw it all the way. Richmond quickly up across midfield. Number 22, Jerome Schmidt. Passed it off to a player behind the goal. Looking for an open man in front. Nobody's moving around much. There we go. Number 11, Jeff Matsuo. Still behind the Mountaineers goal coming out the left side. Nobody's setting a pick for him. Number 22 out there, Jerome Schmidt unable to handle the ball. Pushed right into the trailer, actually. Yeah, we felt a little jolt up here. You'll see your screen vibrate a bit. That's from a player's head going into the side of the truck. <laughs> no. And Mountaineer penalty. No, I'm sorry. Is it? No, just procedure. Change of possession. Number 21, Dan Plant. Quick shot. I thought he was going to try a backhand there the way he was lining up for that. Oh, and a great goal, actually. And was that Schmidt, number 22? It was. A nice bounce shot to beat the goalie. And Richmond getting a little closer. That's his second goal of the game, actually. Make the goal, make the score seven to five for the Mountaineers. And we're just about at halftime, I would guess. Richmond eager, player already down. They'd like to see that there's a possibility they could tie this up before halftime. Seven to five, Mountaineers in the lead. 
And Richmond called for procedure. The ball awarded to the Mountaineers. Rosen with the ball. We're seeing a great deal more positional play in, in this junior varsity game than we did in the one previous. Rosen shot blocked in front, picking up his own rebound. Picking up a headset too. Yes. Yeah, no, the 16 and under junior varsity league here, um, They've been playing a few years longer. They're a little more organized. You can see the experience uh, on their positioning. And a big hit. And flags flying everywhere. And Richmond's ball. I thought that was a clean hit, honest, to be honest, uh, with the refs. Both saw it differently than myself. Jordan West Pratt off on the penalty for the Mountaineers. And the Mountaineers goalie putting the ball out. Number 59, Timothy Stubbley. Tim unable to control it. Richmond with the ball. Number 21, Plant. Passed it off to his number 16. Hard bounce shot across the front of the goal. Out of bounds. Richmond will put it in play. Back out front. Too wide for a shot. Big stick gets in the way. Ball kicked out of bounds. Richmond. Dixon with the ball. Passed it off to Plant. Plant to Dixon. A little give and go. Dixon couldn't control the pass. Number 38. Passed it off to Rosen. Rosen up across center for the Mountaineers. Playing it in the middle. And the goalie pass intended once again to the right side of the goal. Where the Mountaineers have scored two. Richmond quickly back. Scramble in front of the Mountaineers goal. 47 for the Mountaineers, given a one minute penalty. You, thank you. Could I get you to do me a favor? Mountaineers behind their own goal, gets it out. Jordan West Pratt. Pass up field. And a fight for the ball. A weight discrepancy here. Richmond coming up with it. Back into the middle to Plant. Daniel Plant. Cradling the ball as he takes it across center. Out to his winger. Into the crease man. Shoots and he scores. Number 16 for Richmond. Puts it behind the Mountaineers goalie to draw them a little bit closer. Rod Armstrong. Plant will draw an assist on that. <coughs> Got it on camera. Our crack crew getting it for you here. Boom! Lucky the net was there. It would have come right through the screen into your living room. A nice goal to make it a one goal game. Seven to six for the Mountaineers. So in the latter stage of the first half, Richmond drawing within one. We very, could have, very well could have a tie game here before she gets much further along. Richmond quickly off the faceoff, and he shoots, and the goalie just puts it over the crossbar.
Richmond a little mo more momentum here in the latter stages of the first half. We got a delayed penalty coming to the Mountaineers. May have two, actually. Second uh, one-minute high stick. Referees being uh, generous. And I believe that's the end of the first half. A super first half, Derek. Great action. Great action. The score, ladies and gentlemen, the Mountaineers. We've got uh, seven and Richmond six. We've got a one goal game after the first half. Our junior varsity gold silver medal game coming to you from the South Arm Community Center on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. John Filtooth along with Derek Major. Uh, somewhat privileged here. We're sitting up in the sun on a, on a gorgeous afternoon watching some fine fields across. Yeah, a great game. This afternoon, the uh, the Mountaineers started off dominating the game with uh, three quick goals right off the beginning, and Richmond's come back to make it a, a one-goal game here. Um, I'm looking forward to the second half. Play uh, has play has not been in, in favor of any one team in that first half uh, overall. No, both teams have uh, controlled the ball equally as well. Um, a lot of good open field play, and when they get it down into the attacking zone, good possession of the ball, getting some quality shots on that. Um, Great gold medal game. Uh, see why these two teams are in the championship here. Pretty equally matched. All in all, it's uh, we, we can use a lot of a lot of adjectives, but it, it's just some very fine lacrosse. Doesn't get much better than this. Than we're this seeing is, this afternoon. This we're worthy the, of a championship game. Yeah, this is the best there is in the province of British Columbia, and uh, BC's been pretty well represented at, at nationals around the country. So this is some of the best lacrosse at this age level that you're going to see anywhere in Canada. Make a note of the names, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to be hearing a lot from some of these fellas. This is John Filter along with Derek Major. Our first halftime Junior Varsity Championship game. John Filtooth with Derek Major back for second half action in the Junior Varsity gold medal game. We got the Mountaineers and Richmond. The score at this point in the game, ladies and gentlemen, the Mountaineers seven, Richmond six. A close, very hard fought contest. We're seeing some super lacrosse on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. Field lacrosse at its finest. Richmond with possession. Working the ball in front of the Mountaineers' goal. Now in behind it. Mountaineers able to pick up Rosen for the Mountaineers. Up the left side, across center. Pushed out of bounds. Flips the ball up. Richmond ball. He stepped out. Number 22 for Richmond. Jerome Schmidt puts it in. Now Chris Gilfillian back to Jeff Matsuo. Back, back to Gilfillian. Gilfillian with the ball for Richmond, trying to work his way in front. Knocked loose by the Mountaineer defender, picked up by Jordan West Pratt. He gets the ball up the field well. He does, and very quickly. Loose ball at center. Picked up by number 48, Scott Tuff. Tuff with a ball for the Mountaineers. Over to Travis Taylor. Taylor, a integral part of the Mountaineers' offense this afternoon. Yeah, it made a good break through the middle and uh, tried to bounce shot goalie. Got a, a stick and body in front of it, make a good save. Scott Tuff with a ball for the Mountaineers. Back to Rosen. Rosen to Taylor. Taylor back to Rosen. Trying to work the ball in front. Number 48's got tough. Looking for an opportunity, looking for a little room to get a give and go here. Tough with the ball. Passed it off, give and go didn't work. Defender got his stick in the way. Mountaineers wind up with the ball. Back out to Taylor. Taylor the point man on this. Into number 47, right in front, he shoots. And they score. 
From my angle, it looked like that ball popped out right away. It must have bounced off that net and came out quickly. They did call it a goal. Sure looked like the goalie stopped that that's, and kicked it out. Yeah, from, from our perspective, that's what it looked like. We've got no bar in the center of the net. Let's see if a cameraman's got an angle from behind there. Here we go. And Taylor with the ball out front. Cross. No, the player was in the way, but it sure looked like the goalie kicked that out. He may have been behind the line at the time. Regardless, uh, Mountaineers up by two. Mountaineers eight, Richmond six. Early in the second half, loose ball. Fight for it. Richmond up with the ball quickly across center. Jeff Matsuo passing it off all the way over to the left. I'm hearing a lot more talking from the Mountaineer defense now, letting everyone else know where the ball is. You hear top left, top right. Goaltender's doing a lot of yelling, letting his defenders know where that ball is at all times. Looking for that pass out front, unable to capitalize. Mountaineers coming away with the ball. Both goalies have been sharp in this game. Not giving up any easy goals. Taylor with the ball up across center quickly for the Mountaineers. Big opening, big hole in the middle if he can get by that defender. Taylor, Taylor looking, trying to move in. No room to shoot, drop the ball, picked up by Richmond quickly. Up across center. Long pass. Here we go. Scores! Beautiful passing play by Richmond. Great transition. Yes, it was. Number nine for Richmond, Christian Matheson. Getting the tally. To bring Richmond within one. Number 26, the speedster, to 11 and nine. See, now that all started from Travis Taylor trying to go one-on-one -on -one a little too much. Lost possession of the ball up at the top. And Richmond capitalized. Great transition. Fed it up to their attackmen. Nice passing play and uh, scored a nice goal. McQuinney to Matsuo. And finally, Matheson puts it, in the goal, puts it in the net to bring Richmond within one of the Mountaineers. Mountaineers quickly back on the attack in the Richmond zone. Rosen with a ball for the Mountaineers. And Rosen in the middle, having a tough time keeping his balance back <laughs> on his feet. Taylor all over him, or pardon me, Plant. He was getting a few sticks on him there. There he was, a Richmond goalie. Puts it out to that very same Mr. Plant. Up to the winger, in quickly. A long shot, Hopper blocked by the goalie. Loose ball. We got a whistle. Pushing from behind again. Richmond ball. Number 21, Dan Plant. Into number 19, Mike Chambers. Back to Plant. Plant elects to bounce a shot in just, the goalie lost it and it just bounced wide to the right. He's not gonna score from that far out. Richmond's gotta get that ball in a little tighter. They're doing what they were doing, what they were doing in the first quarter and shooting from way too far out. They scored all their goals from in nice and tight. They gotta start doing that again. If they wanna take the lead. Rosen with the ball up to O'Grady for the Mountaineers. Back to Rosen. Nice little give and go play. Rosen up the left side across center. I'm gonna wait for his teammates to catch up. He's a good box lacrosse player and he's uh, making the transition over to field lacrosse now. Scott Tough trying to deliver a pass in front. Goes awry. Richmond goalie has the ball. Look at these trophies. Oh, beautiful hardware that's going to go to the winning team this year. 
Yeah, there's a lot of nice trophies. There's uh, all-star team trophies, MVP trophies, championship trophies. Uh, the junior, the junior varsity uh, to be decided here right now. The youth game's already been decided, and one more varsity game, the under-19, still to be decided here this afternoon. Richmond still with possession, looking for that equalizer. Behind the Mountaineers' net, Matheson. Matheson coming out the left, the right side, it'll be from the goalie's point of view. Christian Matheson. And now Plant with the ball. Right out in front of the goalie. As you mentioned, Derek, they're going to have to shoot from closer in than that. And they're going to have to work the ball in a little tighter, find some openings, get a better shot off. Mountaineers bringing it out. Jordan with the ball, trying to flip it up to another player. Matheson trying to pick up a loose ball. The Mountaineers get possession. Mark Stubbley up the right side, just missed a player right out in front of the goal. And Richmond winds up with possession. Good work from the big stick. R Richmond big stick behind his own goal. Long pass upfield. Found number 16, Rod Armstrong. And Rod Armstrong ran into a brick wall of a goaltender there. <laughs> Jeff Matsuo to Rod Armstrong. Armstrong still shaking a few of the bells out. Back to plant. And the ball out of bounds. We're seeing some super lacrosse this afternoon. John Filtooth along with Derek Major bringing you some pretty exceptional lacrosse worthy of the championship caliber. Gold and silver game for junior varsity. We just got to look at some of the beautiful trophies awaiting these players, the teams. That they're battling for here today. And it's a good battle. That it is. And a good clear from the Mountaineers getting the ball out of their own end. All the way down. Scrambled in front of the Richmond goal. Still a loose ball. Picked up by Richmond. Back out front. Good clear. Three on one. And across. Ball still in bounds. Rod Armstrong doing a good job to catch up with it. Mountaineers with possession. Tough with the ball for the Mountaineers. Scott Tough. <coughs> Losing. Ball popped out of the pocket. Now Richmond coming back across center quickly. Drawing two players into the middle and could not pick up the pass. The Mountaineers quickly back. Loose ball in front. Mountaineers still with possession back to Rosen. Rosen long pass across. Looking for someone to break through the middle now. Here we go, here we go, right in front of the goalie and a Point blank stopped by the Richmond goalie. Good stop. Uh, it certainly was. Mountaineer player had a great angle out in front. Uh, took a pretty hard shot as well. Jordan O'Grady back to Rosen. Rosen into Taylor. Dean. Not a good pass through the middle there. Too many sticks in the way and uh, deflected away. By number 20 for Richmond, the big stick, Tom Johnston. Mountaineers will put the ball in play from behind the Richmond goal. I believe
believe that's number 48, tough with the ball. Attempted pass blocked by the Richmond player on him tight, a big stick. So now the Mountaineers are a little better at working that ball in tighter to the net. We're well, getting far better quality shots, I think, than the Richmond team. Mountaineers number 53, Jordan O'Grady. Picks up the loose ball way behind the Richmond goal. See, they're working for the good shot. They've had possession of the ball here for a couple minutes now. Tough with the ball for the Mountaineers. Looking for a chance to shoot. Goalie saw it all the way for Richmond. See, now this is, again, where the goalie becomes an important part of field lacrosse in the clear. They're trying to get it over half, get it into their attacking zone. They're setting it up right now. And the goalie's that extra man. Interference called on the Richmond team. Mountaineers ball, change of possession. Number 53, Jordan O'Grady for the Mountaineers. Into the offensive zone. O'Grady, quick in front. Bounce shot. Richmond goalie put his body in front of it. Uh, attempt to clear again, looking for a man to get open. Mountaineers doing a good job of covering the men out front. They're riding that clear pretty well, keeping the ball from being cleared over half. But Richmond's successful and then making a bad pass into the middle. Bit of inexperience showing on the part of some of the players, but pass is not missing by much. Right out in front of the Mountaineers, and a long, hard shot. Yeah, there may be a little inexperience in the field lacrosse game. They're still showing great lacrosse skills. A lot yeah, of these players have played box lacrosse since they were five or six years old. And uh, like we mentioned earlier, the field game is just growing and becoming a lot more popular. So some of them you see pick up the field game really well. And there's others that are still trying to learn some of the ins and outs. Oh, and a great goal as I'm talking. Travis Taylor from in front on a nice crossing pass left unobstructed in front of the Richmond goal. That was Travis Taylor, you say? It was. Number 51 once again for the Mountaineers. 9-7 to seven for the Mountaineers over Richmond at this point in the third quarter. So the Mountaineers once again opening up a two-goal lead. That's Travis's uh, second goal, I believe, of the game. I am very pleasantly surprised we're uh, for this level of lacrosse we're seeing some, a lot of stick skills yeah the uh, the box skill the box game teaches uh, some great stick skills uh, that's most evident by uh, people like Gary and Paul Gates some of the the best lacrosse players in the world learning box skills here in Canada taking those skills down to Syracuse University and using them to become uh, NCAA All-Americans and uh, and showing the world really what can what, what can be done with with these skills that you can learn up here in the box game in Canada two, revolutionizing the field game two great ambassadors for the sport I'm very proud to say that uh, yeah the 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 mill the major indoor lacrosse league uh, world championship was on the other day and uh, it it pitted the gate brothers against each other Philadelphia against Rochester and they both put on a clinic if you would of lacrosse skills from right here uh, right here from British Columbia from Victoria actually a couple of young Jack Beyondas in the making Marvel they're just tremendous athletes they're they just they have uh, tremendous skill speed they've got good size and strength they're just the perfect lacrosse athlete provided us with many hours of super lacrosse entertainment the Mountaineers pressing hard looking to open that lead Seen some good lacrosse here this afternoon, we too. We sure are. And Richmond able to come away with it, a sprint. And, yeah, one hand on the shoulder and the... Uh, Other stick wrapped up around the neck, it looked like there. You got to call that one, Tim. I've had the opportunity to... Uh, to watch Tim mature all the way up through the ranks as a lacrosse player and then as a coach and, and now as a referee in this sport. 
You see now that uh, the Mountaineer Club has got, I believe, four, at least four big sticks on the field right now. To Since they are in a man short situation, they're trying to take advantage of those sticks, being able to defend more than one person at a time now because they are man down. Penalized player coming back on the field, I think, just as we speak, Derek. Must have only been a 30-second penalty. Teams at even strength. Richmond behind the Mountaineers goalie. Back out, looking for an open man. Richmond being forced to shoot from the outside. Mountaineers not giving them any room in tight. And Jordan West Pratt, long clearing pass out to Travis Taylor. Taylor with the ball for the Mountaineers, now in the Richmond zone. Long, long pass across the field to number 53, Jordan O'Grady. You hear a shuffling papers in the background. We got a little breeze blowing up here on the top of the truck where we're doing the broadcast from, and every once in a while, a gust will come up and blow all our paperwork down to the fans down below. Cameraman almost got hit with the ball there. We made it, would have made for a good shot if he did. Ball at center, still loose. Nice. Oh, and the whistle had gone before. No, no goal. goal. Bas de boue. And that's the end of the third quarter. 15 minutes of action left, and the score after three quarters of play, the Mountaineers 9, Richmond 7, in what's turning out to be a pretty fantastic game of field lacrosse, worthy of the gold and silver that they're playing for. Yeah, still a two-goal game, uh, very easy to make up in lacrosse, easy to score, five, six, seven, eight, ten goals in a quarter. The... Uh, Richmond team's a little behind here. Hopefully their coach is uh, telling them to get in a little tighter for some shots. Uh, they're not going to be scoring from out there on the Mountaineer goaltender. He's making some uh, some good stops from outside. Both the goalies have, uh, you can't slight either of them. The Mountaineers have had the better shots, I think, Derek. Definitely in that quarter they did. The, uh, the Richmond team in the second quarter started working in the ball in a little closer and uh, scored four goals that quarter. This last quarter they only got one goal, took too many shots from the outside. And uh, I think I've said that three or four times now, but they, they've got to get in a little tighter to get a shot on this uh, Mountaineer goalie if they want to beat him. Well, get they, back in this game. They're I'm, still in the game, but... That they are. I notice the Richmond coach does not have a headset on, so he's not privy to the comments up here, or else he would be doing it. <laughs> I think he's probably telling his players just that same thing right now, though. He's probably realizing that they're not getting uh, too great of scoring opportunities. With only one goal in that period. They've got to do something. A little timeout between the third and fourth quarters, ladies and gentlemen. The score, the Mountaineers 9, Richmond 7. This is John Filtooth and Derek Major bringing you some fantastic field lacrosse, the gold-silver medal game Maybe the DC with, Championship. Maybe with this little break in the action, I'd like to mention again, uh, we were talking about funding earlier. We mentioned it briefly. Sport Canada has recently cut the federal funding to the Canadian Lacrosse Association down to 40% of its budget this year and within two years the funding will be cut totally leaving our national programs without any money whatsoever. Well who do we contact now? What we are recommending people do is that player contact their local MP and write them letters and and express their concern. Canada's national sport with their funding levels being cut because it did not meet Sport Canada's criteria. Some of that criteria little I don't agree with a lot of it you know they they set their priorities on Olympic medals and uh, lacrosse not being an Olympic sport doesn't meet a lot of their high performance criteria and therefore a lot of that money is is not going to be coming out to our uh, grassroots domestic programs or even trying to develop uh, high performance programs for these athletes that you see out here uh, lacrosse is solely paid for by by all the volunteers, the members, the player registrations, and some fundraising efforts on part of the, the British Columbia Lacrosse Association. And uh, there's just not going to be any other federal money to help out. So I'm, I'm in I'm a quandary in as, as to why and, and how they can do this. We see lacrosse growing by leaps and bounds, not only in field lacrosse, but in, in box lacrosse as well. 
And it's my understanding that there's a, they're going to make ballroom dancing now in a, an Olympic sport and, and fund that. I'm serious. Yeah, they're funding some strange sports. I mean, uh, table tennis in Canada receives hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars a year um, because we have a, a member that does fairly well at the Olympics. So they're worthy of hundreds of thousands of dollars where the great sport of lacrosse is uh, receiving absolutely nothing. So if you, uh, if you are concerned about that, please contact the British Columbia Lacrosse Association or write a letter to your member of parliament and uh, hopefully we can get back in this funding loop. Let's not just talk about it, let's do something about it. Make a little noise. That old adage, this, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, well, uh, I, I think it's an absurd decision. And we should make our feelings known. I agree 100%. Speaking of noise, there's some noise back on the field. We've uh, resumed play here in the fourth quarter. With the score, the Mountaineers 9 and Richmond 7. Back to the gold-silver medal game. Junior varsity. And Rosen with a ball for the Mountaineers. And uh, being bothered, I was looking for a referee's flag to go up, but uh, apparently it was a clean stick check. <laughs> Scramble for the loose ball in front of the Richmond goalie. And the Mountaineers come up with it. And number 66, Rosen. Bounce shot just to the goalie's right. Goes out of bounds. Oh, the Mountaineers are definitely not relaxing on their two-goal lead. They're coming out strong here in the fourth quarter, trying to uh, extend that lead a little and shoot themselves of a, a gold medal here this afternoon. The Mountaineers able to get shots from a lot closer in or a lot tighter on the goalie than Richmond. Once again, shot. Richmond goalie busy to start this fourth quarter. He's played well. I mean, we have to give him a lot of credit. He has uh, faced a lot of shots from inside 20 feet. And he's kept the Richmond team within two. As a matter of fact, they were tied at one point in the game. It's been close all the way through. Goalie bringing the ball out. Now being challenged by a Mountaineer. And Richmond up across center. Very quickly in. And looking for a crease man. Play broken up. Jordan, Jordan. Westfat got that big stick in the way. And the transition game that you spoke about, the Mountaineers very quick to capitalize. Shot on the goalie. Richmond once again out across center. Matheson for Richmond. Picks up the loose ball. He's going to shoot. And couldn't quite get the ball down enough looking to drop it in behind the goalie. Again, from far out like that, a straight shot to the top corner. The, goalie, the goalie's got a really good chance of making the save. Here's an open net. And the goalie, a super job to get out in front. He recovered well. Has yes. to come from behind the net and dive in front there to make a play. And once again, the ball pulled right off his stick by one of the Mountaineers, Jordan West Pratt, fighting for the loose ball. And the Mountaineers up across center. Quickly into the attack. Transition game. Some great end-to-end -end action in the last They're, few minutes. We're seeing some super lacrosse. They're definitely not slowing down in this fourth quarter. Rod Armstrong with the ball for Richmond. Up the right side across center. Now working his way toward the middle. Matheson for Richmond did not miss by much. You can hear comments from the sidelines. Don't waste your opportunities like that. Uh, I have to agree. Get it in a little tighter. Let's get a better shot on this net. If uh... Richmond shooting from 50 to 60 feet out. Working the ball in once again. Armstrong for Richmond. Plays the ball across to his... Uh, his number 26, Michael McQuinney, and Armstrong once again brought down. Perhaps more out of breath than injured. He's been doing a lot of work out there. Jordan Westbutt wrapped that big stick around him to check the ball free. Must have caught, him, caught him somewhere. Caught it's him like on, the, on the shin or the upper or the thigh. Knee, yeah. 
get him off the field and we'll resume play. That great save by the goalie near Here we go. We just goalie comes running out from behind the net, just in time to intercept and what would have been a goal for Richmond. Back to the live action. Number 51, Taylor. Into tough, tough with the ball for the Mountaineers. Back to Taylor. doing what we've been exhorting the Richmond team to do, move the ball in. Better quality shot. Taylor over to Tough. Tough looking for a man in front, well covered by the Richmond Big Stick. What are these guys doing? They're talking about plans after the game. <laughs> Waiting for the ball to come back down. Yeah, with the ball being in the attacking zone here for the Mountaineers, uh, three of their defenders must stay on that side of half, and uh, <laughs> Richmond's three attackmen must stay on that side of half. Tough checking right down in front of our cameras. Players uh, reminding the referee of the rules, whether he's going to pay any heed or not. Uh, we'll see. Jordan West Pratt deflecting a Richmond pass in front. Richmond still comes up with the ball. In tight, working it even closer. Attempted a hard shot, blocked by one of the big sticks. In front. I'm surprised the referee even bothered listening to the players telling them about the rules because uh, in the field lacrosse game, the referees don't put up with any back talk from the players or uh, any abusive language whatsoever. A little more sportsmanlike in this game. and A little bit more so than perhaps in box lacrosse where we've, uh, we've heard some disparaging marks about uh, the referee's lineage on occasion. Yes. Number 21 for Richmond. Dan Plant. Over to his winger. Quick shot. Scramble in front. Loose ball. Put back into the center. They score. I haven't seen the I haven't seen him put his arms up for a goal. I've just seen a flag so far. See where they put the ball in play. Timeout Richmond, Mountaineers penalty, so it's got to be a goal that counts. Yeah, haven't seen the symbol yet uh, for the goal, but apparently it was a goal and a penalty after the fact. So Richmond now draws within one. 9-8. Richmond 8, the Mountaineers 9 on a beautiful Sunday afternoon from South Arm Community Center. Here we go. Back to the replay. Right out in front, number 16. Quick hard shot, stopped by the goalie and a scramble in front. And number 11 getting the goal for Richmond. Jeff Matsuo, the assist to Rod Armstrong. Break in the action. Yeah, per, perhaps a timeout called by one. How many timeouts are they given? Or are they allowed? Perhaps the... Uh, don't put the camera on us when I don't have an answer like that. <laughs> well, I don't either. Well, just make up a number and... We've seen one per team per game so far, but let's, let's assume that uh, maybe that's the limit. <laughs> And the Mountaineer team discussing a little strategy, as are the Richmond players. It's a one-goal game for the gold and silver medals. And we've had even play throughout all three and a half quarters so far. The Mountaineers perhaps uh, capitalizing a little more on their opportunities, working the ball in a little closer, Derek. Yeah, as we've mentioned throughout most of the game. And uh, Richmond got in there nice and tight that time. Had a couple shots right out in front and have gotten their players right in front. The coach must be telling him, get in a little tighter. 
So it obviously was a goal. We are facing off here at center. The Mountaineers a one goal lead over the Richmond Junior Varsity team. Richmond controlling the ball again. Armstrong up the right or the left side. Back into the middle. Dan Plant for Richmond. And a shot stopped by the, the Mountaineer goalie. James Rosen up the right side. Being hassled by number 22 from Richmond. Doing a good job. Kelly Tough. I'm sorry, Mr. Scott Tough. There's just what I spoke of. Uh, pushed the player out of bounds, made a comment back to the ref, awarded a one minute penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct. Conduct, speaking back to the ref. We just got a, a trainer's being called over. Hard to see what happened. It's actually right below us. Well, let's see if the camera. Get the action right. Being forced over to the sidelines. Oh, it took a couple good shots in the back. Thrown out of bounds. May have been a little uh, after the whistle action that we didn't catch. I thought he spoke back to the ref, but apparently he went over and did something to the player on the ground to receive that one minute penalty. Armstrong with the ball for Richmond. There's a good chance for Richmond now. They've got a man up situation down one goal. Let's see if they can capitalize. Richmond trying to work the ball into an open man out front. Armstrong quarterback in this power play. Mountaineers got their four big sticks on trying to. McQuinney with the ball trying to move his way in. Trying to Can't. beef up the defense a little. Jeff Matsuo. Back out to Armstrong. Armstrong. Not even gonna get to try to get by the big stick. Into 25, Jason Hader. Penalty's almost over. Richmond hasn't got a shot on net yet. Tough back on the field. The penalty has expired. There's their first and only shot. After the players coming back on an even strength shot. Ball out of bounds. Richmond ball. Richmond's going to try and capitalize on every opportunity here. They down by one right out front. Pass deflected by a Mountaineer. Armstrong. On the Mountaineer side of center with the ball for Richmond. Coming in. Jammed out front, and the goalie very quick picked Try, that off. Yeah, tried to. Thought he had the goalie screen there, but uh, goalie saw that ball all the way, made an easy save. Rosen being bothered. Managed to get the ball through to number 53, Jordan O'Grady. O'Grady back out front, an errant pass. Out of bounds. Richmond ball. Richmond needs a goal here. In the worst way, or the ball, well, any way they can get it. Michael McQuinney with the ball. McQuinney over to Schmidt. Schmidt back to McQuinney. McQuinney trying to work his way inside. Can't go through three players. Rosen with the ball for the Mountaineers. Can't quite clear. Richmond still pressing, looking for an open shot. Behind the goal, back out front. Tried the goalie on the short side. He had the net well covered. Out of bounds. Maybe should have tried coming out in front of that net and got a better angle to shoot at. That was a tough angle to put anything in from. Jeff Matsuo puts it out to Armstrong. 
Armstrong to the goalie's left. Gill filling with the ball. Back to Armstrong. Armstrong looking for room inside. Nothing happening. Gill filling. Out to 22. Oh, what a nice Schmidt. shot. Blocked. Ball out of bounds. Richmond you know, ball. Let's see now there. Richmond worked the ball around nicely. Got a got a nice shot from from in fairly close. Goaltender made another great save. Errant pass all the way out across center. And uh, interference, Mountaineers ball. Tough, Scott Tough with the ball for the Mountain. Oh, I'm sorry, number 51, Travis Taylor, his line mate. Travis likes to go one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, looks like he's lining up for an ISO here. Waiting for the middle to clear. Uh, well, looks like he's going to try it from the top. Right from the top of the key, and no. All right, Chris, you got force him. Well covered by Chris Gilfillan. Yeah, there is no shot clock in field lacrosse, so uh, again, possession is important. You want to be able to work that ball around, keeping possession of the ball to get a good shot on net. Rosen with the ball for the Mountaineers. Mountaineers not good. He's in tight. He shoots. He scores. Rosen just to the goalie's right. A low shot. And that's their first goal of the quarter to extend that uh, again to a two-goal lead. Ten to eight for the Mountaineers now. Rosen giving the Mountaineers a bit of a cushion. That uh, looks to be his third goal of the game, actually. Could be a hat trick for big number 66 for the Mountaineers. Mountaineers from out uh, Matsqui, Abbotsford, Maple Ridge area, as you mentioned, Eric. Yeah, and uh, doing a good job here. Richmond's got their work cut out for them in the last half of the fourth quarter. Need two goals to tie this up. Face off late in the fourth quarter. Richmond possession. Chris Gilfillan. Richmond's been doing a good job of uh, winning some faceoffs and getting possession. They just have to capitalize here now. Plant trying to work his way in. A shot. He scores! A nice move to beat the defender. Nice high bounce shot over the goalie. Dan Plant, the Mountaineers, not quick to react. He came in quickly. Here he is in tight around two men. A nice little weave, and he puts a bounce shot up and over the goalie's shoulder. And that's his second goal of the game. <laughs> to help bring Richmond back to within one. We got a one goal game for the gold and silver medals. Face off at center, still a loose ball. Play on, the ref says. Plant again with the ball. Shouldered the face guard, a little disconcerting. Drop the ball, loose ball. Number six, Chris Gilfillan for Richmond. Chris working his way in. Pass off. Ball dead in front. Flipped just to the left of the goalie. And the goalie hustled well out of the net to get to that end line first. Uh, Mountaineers in. Of the ball. Possession. Richmond out front. Jordan West Pratt knocked the ball loose. The Mountaineers come up with it. Good work by the Richmond Big Stick. Or pardon me, the Mountaineer Big Stick. I should have it straight by the end of the game. Travis Taylor with the ball for the Mountaineers. Taylor faking a shot. Trying to get the goalie to move. 
They're slowing it down nicely here, yeah, using the clock. Richmond not doing much to force him. And box lacrosse skills rather obvious. Some of the players. You can tell a lot by the way the players hold their stick. The way he's holding his stick now with one hand is uh, is a field lacrosse maneuver to keep the ball on the other side of their body. You'll see a lot of players cradling with both hands on the stick, coming at a guy head on, and uh, very easy for a big stick defender to just poke that stick away and check him. That's why you see the the, the, the guys that have played field lacrosse quite a bit dropping that one hand off the stick and protecting that stick with their body turning sideways. A good point, good indicator of. Uh, we're slowing down a little bit up here, ladies. We got some uh, some exhaust fumes coming up from the truck that are, and that. Uh, if 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 I start to fade out, we'll have one of the cameramen jostle me here. And, little lapses as I as I start Fine. there we go I'm back now we have to wake up <laughs> Taylor in front of the Richmond goal oh. and the goalie just able to get the stick on it and fend off a Mountaineers second goal or pardon me a goal that would have put the Mountaineers up by two I'll be all right it's got to be the fumes well we can't blame it on anything else at least not on the air <laughs> Mountaineers retaining possession. Rosen. Big Jim Rosen. Three. Like you mentioned, three goals already this three afternoon. Three or uh, possibly four. I can't read my own handwriting anymore. Rosen puts it off. Travis Taylor. Taylor. Couldn't find Rosen with a return pass. Now, do the players have to wait on their side of center? Those players cannot come over center. The uh, the defending team must keep uh, three defenders and a goalie, and the attacking team must keep their three attack men on that side of the field at all times. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> I was beginning to wonder. I, I, I knew there was a rule, but these guys all standing with their toes on the line. Yeah, they're waiting for... Oh! And the Mountaineers, number 51, Travis Taylor, gives them that cushion, that two-goal cushion back. 11-9. Yeah, so it's a six-on-six six on each side of the field at all times. The uh, You've seen sometimes the big sticks coming over center. They just have to keep a midfielder back on their side of the field now. The midfielders are going from from the attacking end to the defending end. And it doesn't really matter who goes over as long as there's uh, there's three players on each side of the field at all time. And late in the fourth quarter, the Mountaineers up by two over Richmond. And ball loose on the faceoff. Still loose, and you see everyone else behind these other white lines until one of the midfielders gains possession of the ball. The referee will signal possession, and the other players can be released from behind those restraining lines. Now they're moving. And Richmond, a quick shot. The Mountaineer goalie stopped it. Big stop. It certainly was. Armstrong in. <coughs> Number six, Gil Fillin for Richmond. Back in tight, he shoots, he scores! From right in front, Richmond's number 39, Mark Miyashita. Mark's been waiting for that one all game. Mark, I believe, is only 13 years old if it's, uh, if the, it's same. the same Miyashita that was playing in the youth final earlier on playing up with the with the 16 and under team and fitting right in here's Miyashita or pardon me the pass out in front and 22 to 39 and a very quick turn and in the back of the net goalie looking in the socks for that one 11 to 10 and I don't know which team called the timeout but a very close game 
the final few minutes of the fourth quarter. Once again, John Filtooth and Derek Major bringing you a gold, silver, junior varsity lacrosse game, BC Championships in the South Arm Community Center on an absolutely gorgeous Sunday afternoon. Yeah, what a great facility out here. There's, uh, five, we've had five lacrosse fields going all weekend long, narrowing it down here to the championship games. Uh, the Richmond Lacrosse Association has done a fabulous job hosting along with the Pacific Coast Field League here this weekend. We've been witness to some great games, some great lacrosse action. Um, it takes an awful lot of effort behind the scenes to, to make this come up. And the moon is still out. As well as the sun. A few mosquitoes. <laughs> Other than that. And a lot of lacrosse fans. A lot of lacrosse fans on the sidelines. Two great lacrosse teams on the field. And we got a two goal championship game late in the fourth quarter. And some commentators babbling aimlessly. I think due to the fumes up here on top of the trailer. Here we go, play underway. And Richmond. No, no clear possession yet. And the Mountaineers come up with the ball. The intensity level is up. The timekeeper, I believe, is on the field. We're in the last minute of play then. Travis Taylor doing just a superb job shielding the ball. And that's the end of the game. An 11 to 10 final. The Mountaineer Field Lacrosse Club over Richmond. What a celebration going on the field. Uh, well deserving a hard fought game. Mountaineers. Mountaineers were in the lead right from the beginning, and uh, it, was, it was close all the way through. Richmond but, able to draw even at one point, I believe, in the second quarter, but the Mountaineers able to keep it up one goal, or one or two goals ahead throughout the second half. A one-goal game, a good effort on both teams. A, uh, a well-deserving gold-silver medal, gold, silver medal matchup. So the Mountaineers from the Valley, the Upper Valley, take the gold in the junior varsity and Richmond with a silver medal. <coughs> uh, the Mountaineers perhaps capitalizing a little more on the opportunities uh, and also the bounce of the ball. A very close hard fought contest which actually could have gone either way. And now the team's congratulating each other. Yeah, and here we go, that final goal being played. Second, the second to the last Mountaineers goal. Back to the live action. There's a shot of uh, Rose and a big part of the Mountaineers offense. Four goals for him. And uh, a well coached game on the Mountaineers part as well. Uh, Andrew Stubbley, who, who coaches that team, had some of his uh, younger brothers playing on the team, I believe. That he did. As, as a matter of fact, number, number 59 and 60. Mark and Tim Stubbley. A good effort for the Mountaineers. They've uh, they've had a good field program out in that area for a few years, and it's good to see them uh, come away here with our second second year of the Pacific Coast Field League, walk away with uh, the gold medal. Uh, they didn't really walk away with it. They had to, to battle for it, definitely, in an 11-10 win. And uh, I think it was a great game, great action out here this afternoon. Oh, I have to agree with you. Not only an idyllic setting, but some super entertainment for the fans here. And later when you see this at home, field lacrosse at its finest, the BC Championships. John Filtooth and Derek Major, we brought you the gold-silver game for junior varsity. The Mountaineers coming away with a one-goal victory. The score, 11-10 over the Richmond team.